with the Digital Digest, and today I'm sharing my first update on my experience with the Lenovo ThinkBook Plus Gen 5 Hybrid. It retails for roughly $3,500 U.S. dollars. I'll include a link in the description. And in full disclosure, this was furnished to me for review purposes by the manufacturer, but will be going back once my coverage has been completed. So with that said, this is an absolute knockout product. It is a true two-in-one, and I'm excited about it because even though it is significantly more expensive than the $2,000 price point that Lenovo had initially teased back at CES when we first saw this in the wild, it will go down in price, I assure you of that. So if right now $3,500 seems like too much to eliminate carrying two devices with one, I get it, but give it some time. And as this gets improved and refined, it's only going to get better. So again, it looks like a traditional 14-inch uh, Ultrabook 2.K, uh, 2.8K, excuse me, OLED touchscreen, pen input, but what it really transforms into after you hit a simple button, that is the button to flip between uh, Windows and Android OS, you hit that again, the screen goes black, and then you can remove it, and now you have a standalone Android tablet. And don't think it's a, you know, run-of-the-mill Android tablet. We have a Snapdragon 8 Plus uh, Gen 1 under the hood, so last year's flagship, 12 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD. We have three cameras, one here, and then two more on the back, a 5 and 13 megapixel shooter. On the bottom of this tablet, we have its own dedicated power button. We also have a Type-C port for charging and connectivity. And then the rest of these points are how it mounts to the keyboard deck. Now, to take things even further, Lenovo included this stand because there is no kickstand for this when it's in uh, tablet mode and separated from the device. And out of the box, this will run gestures. I switched over to traditional buttons. It's just personal preference. But if you go ahead and dock this on the included travel easel, or it's not really travel easel, just easel, um, what you get is now literally two machines. Because while this might just look like a leftover keyboard dock, all of the Surface Book, uh, from Microsoft, it's not. It is the full-blown PC baked in here, and you can easily, using its onboard Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are on both sides of the machine, connect this to a display, connect this to a Thunderbolt dock, and have a full-blown workstation. And remember, uh, the Ultra 7 is no slouch, 32 gigs of RAM, a great complement, a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD, Wi-Fi 6E that's performing uh, exceptionally well, as expected, Phenomenal build quality. This thing is a little over two pounds. This is a little under two pounds. So really a four pound package out the door. A 100 watt charger comes with it and battery life as per Lenovo is all day. And that's because this has a 75 watt hour battery and the tablet has a 38 watt hour battery. So they've literally given them the specs they actually deserve. I think my only critique so far that I wish was different is that the tablet portion of this device would have an actual built-in kickstand because without it, you're kind of relegated to the easel, which I think is a nice inclusion uh, in the package, but I would definitely rather see a slightly more polished solution. And look, there is time for an improvement. You can see I've got this docked back. We're in Windows mode now. And if I go ahead and unlock that, uh, facial recognition is what I'm going to use because we do have Windows Hello on board with this with the IR camera. So I'll go ahead and unlock that. The microphone is slightly in the way. Let me go ahead and... That's as far back, by the way, as the display goes. And, you know, this reminds me a lot of Microsoft Surface Book, but done right, because we actually have two independent uh, devices. Many of you may remember with the Surface Book, all of the hardware was in the display, battery in the keyboard deck, and when you would separate this, it had its own battery, but it could last like an hour. Here, you have full realized potential out of both devices. So Lenovo leaving nothing uh, to, you know, really be left out, no corners cut that I've experienced. Now, this is not a high refresh display. That's something I do want to point out. So anyone that was looking for 120 hertz out of this 2.8K OLED, you're not going to get it. Uh, do I think that's a huge deal? Um, this is the first product of its kind. So I give Lenovo a pass, and I think the majority of road warriors that are going to want this to replace two devices for one are also going to give Lenovo a pass on this. The other thing you have to remember is that a 14-inch Android tablet with the specs that this machine is rocking doesn't exist. 
Um, you'd have to go with the Tab S9 Ultra from Samsung or Lenovo's own Tab Extreme. Those both have 14 and a half inch displays, and they're both a thousand or more U.S. dollars. So what Lenovo's done here is definitely really impressive, and that's because it works. Um, are there some bugs, some growing pains? Of course, um, not everything is perfect, but it works well, and that is impressive in a first-gen product. Don't forget you have a pen, so when it's in tablet mode, you can use it legitimately for taking notes, drawing, art purposes. Um, and the other benefit of having Android mixed in with Windows is that when it comes to content consumption, you have the best of that with Android, and then when it comes to work and play, you have the best of that with Windows. Now, something I want to point out is that uh, they have their hybrid center, which gives you a tutorial on how all of this works, right with the quick start tab. Um, they show you how to attach and detach. Uh, and this will all be something that I'll show in my full review. Uh, the hybrid uh, file system, the hybrid folder itself, as well as the hybrid stream, which allows you to stream the Android tablet while in Windows mode. And then just showing you the concept of what Lenovo sees as all day battery life with this, which is that use this for the work you need in Windows mode. And then when you're getting low on battery, jump over to Android. And the reason I say that is because when you hit that one button and jump over to Android and uh, unlock with uh, facial recognition, as I just did, you can still use the keyboard and trackpad touchpad, but you're now using the Android tablet. So battery life should be much, much better. It's really going to give you a whole second uh, life, if you will, because you still maintain, you know, PC or laptop workstation functionality, but in an Android device. So that's the other play here is that you will get no better Android tablet on the market uh, in 2024 with a keyboard experience quite like this one, but you're paying for it. No question about that. But something I wanted to point out. So easy to transition back and forth between Windows and Android. We're right back there. I'll give you a quick look at that hybrid stream. So this is going to actively just populate the Android tablet right here. You can see I now have access to that. I can make it full screen. I'm not sure why you would do that. But you can obviously use this on one side, have Windows on the other. I think that is definitely a cool application. So let's say I wanted to jump into you know, a YouTube video, check email here again. Not sure why you would need that, but you get the picture. It's totally plausible. And then in the, uh, you know, if the, the time arises that you want to share content between the Windows world and the Android portion of this true two-in-one, you have uh, the, inside the hybrid center, they give you direct access to its own hybrid folder. So if you go into file sync, you'll have to set this up, but it's a few clicks away. Then you hit open and voila, you can see the hybrid folder guide is right there. It will give you a walkthrough on how this actually works, uh, but it's really straightforward. We're not going to look at that right now. Uh, and of course, I set it up. I dropped a PDF in here just for demonstration purposes. And if I go onto the stream and navigate to its shared folder, that will appear there as well. So it's fairly simple, again, uh, to drop uh, a file in there. And whether it's you know video, pictures, uh, PDFs, Word documents, whatever it may be, Excel spreadsheets, you then have the ability to quickly, you know, work in both workspaces, which I think is cool. Some of you may scratch your head as to why you would need that. And then there are some of you that know exactly what you're going to do with that. So I think it's very cool. And look, if you have an Android tablet and a Windows machine, there are ways that they can communicate, but not like this. So Lenovo doing what I think is really smart stuff with this. Um, and when it comes to the hardware that's in here, it's good. I mean, we've got the Arc graphics, which means light gaming is a go if you're used to Iris XE from days past, uh, what pre-dated uh, the uh, Arc integrated uh, graphic solution now that we've got here with the Ultra 7 chipset, then you're going to see nearly a double in performance. So if a title worked for you with Iris XE, again, expect roughly a double in frame rate when working with the Intel Arc integrated uh, GPU. So that's amazing for an integrated GPU in the realm of Intel and a welcomed improvement uh, for just about everyone on planet Earth. That means photo and video editing are also going to be better. Let's take a look and a listen at what uh, AV performance is like on this quickly. I'm going to start off with this clip right here. Uh, remember, this is an OLED. I think it is good for color critical work from what I've seen so far in nearly two weeks with it. And the speakers are surprisingly loud. Uh, so take a look and a listen to this right now.
Brightness on the display is at 100%, as are its speakers. Well, now the speakers are at 100 Now keep in mind, my mic is not even facing uh, the speakers on this, but they had to be loud because they knew they had to serve double duty between the tablet and laptop experience. So I think they did a good job. Here's an example of what the spoken word sounds like. And give people the ability to, uh, again, replace two devices with one, and hopefully it does so well. I mean, based on the specs, again, this is a real Android tablet with an excellent display, a, a good processor, not the latest and greatest, but a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen. I think that serves. And then just an, another little video sample. This is only full HD, but again, just reminding you how good this OLED is. Of course, this is a video sample from many years ago on my channel. You get the idea. And when it comes to uh, Wi-Fi performance, as I mentioned earlier, I'll go ahead and just show you a speed test quickly. Things have been excellent. I mean, taking full advantage of the Wi-Fi 60 protocol, I've been generally getting a gig, at least a gig, up and down. So no performance hiccups here. I mean, Lenovo seems to have hit this out of the park. And I haven't even talked about the styling, the overall um, aesthetic on this machine. I think it's gorgeous. So I think they've hit every single box you could want to check with this ThinkBook Plus Gen 5 Hybrid. Now, a wish list. This isn't my full review, but of course, if there was a way to get a GPU on board, uh, something discreet, that would be excellent. Even if it was as, you know, entry level as a 4050 or a 4060, of course, the 5000 series GPUs are just around the corner. That would be, well, a dream come true because then you literally would have everything in one package. Your Android tablet and not some puny one, but rather something that you could certainly put a pro label on with its screen quality, display size, pen input, and cameras. And I'll reserve the camera talk for later. I mean, how many laptops have you seen that have three uh, cameras? Granted, my acronym Z13 from Asus has three. Uh, the majority of machines like this simply do not. Or does it have two? I digress. The point is still the point. Uh, this thing is fully loaded, and the only thing it's missing is a GPU. Um, when it comes to battery life, uh, you're going to easily see over 10 hours, if that wasn't obvious, between the 75 watt hour and the early 40 watt hour in the tablet. And if you do what Lenovo was saying, which is use the PC as a PC, and then when the battery gets low, switch over uh, to the tablet, I don't see why you couldn't probably get close to 20 hours out of this thing. It is just that good. So kudos to Lenovo on what they did here. I would say they outdid themselves because no one else has done this, done it well. And while there's you know some work to be done, a little bit more polishing, I still think they did a great job. Now, the pen does uh, dock right there for anyone that was wondering. It does also charge via Type-C, so just to be aware. Um, so you can leave the pen there, but you know if it disappears, don't wonder why. You've got volume rockers right here at the top of the tablet. Remember, the power button is laid in to that hinge where the Type-C port is if you want to charge this independently of the entire machine. But remember, when it's docked like this, it is actively charging. Once this battery is full, then the charging will top off the battery in the tablet. So really, if you want to charge up both quickly, you need two chargers. Just food for thought. Um, at least that's what I believe to be the way uh, the charging is routed. But overall, really like this. Remember, that is the limitation point of how much this can open. And then when it comes to uh, switching the OS, again, as simple as that button press, you can see we're back in Android. And then if I want to detach, as simple as the lock button, but you have to get it into this position, essentially, and then you're good to go. You want to redock it, easy enough, uh, you know, to do, but really just they did a nice job on this. And don't forget, as I mentioned, if what you're looking for is to have a little bit more functionality and truly use both machines, you just put this on its stand and you're good to go. Go ahead and connect this to, you know, like my 42 inch uh, OLED uh, Asus monitor right in front of me using a Thunderbolt dock or just directly uh, through the Thunderbolt 4 port. 
and I'm good to go. Hook up a mouse. I don't need a keyboard, but if I wanted to do that, I could certainly just drop this on a stand. And remember, this has everything in it. All of the hardware um, is here. You know, your Ultra 7 CPU, as you would expect, the 32 gigs of RAM, uh, of course, your Wi-Fi chipset, it's all in this portion. And then the tablet as well, a standalone device that you can be taking care of your work with the workstation and have news or content uh, streaming here. Uh, for example, YouTube TV is a great thing. I mean, I love it. So I could have YouTube TV running here, take care of my work here. I don't know how much work I would get done with that level of focus, but just something to be aware of. And remember, its own dedicated power button and, of course, uh, Type-C port for charging. So they've really thought of everything, and it's just a really nice device that's only going to get better with time and as they uh, essentially keep improving it generation over generation, which I hope they do because this conceptually is just a great one, folks. Nothing to dislike about this so far except its price, and as I've mentioned, it's absolutely going to go down over time. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.